Hey everyone, this is Mason from FilterGrade. If you're building a computer or buying a pre-built computer, for specifically video editing, the CPU and RAM are some of the most critical factors. But the GPU or graphics card is also important. This has always been an important component for some tasks, but is even more so now. A recent update has given Premiere Pro and After Effects the ability to harness the power of the graphics card to accelerate video rendering by up to five times, and previous technologies allowed for faster render times as well. In this guide, we'll talk about how to pick the perfect graphics card for video editing. A note about the next generation of hardware. At any given time, there is new hardware on the horizon that promises to be better performing. At the time of writing, NVIDIA and AMD, both of the major players in the graphics card world, have new generations of technology coming out within the next six months before the end of 2020. That being said, we can't make too many speculations. They will likely be better performing than what is currently available, but that's all we know. This also means that the prices of current hardware could decrease slightly to make room for the new products. There's no harm in buying right now, but there are acceptable reasons for waiting as well. So make your choice based on whether you need something right now or if you can afford to wait and get something better. Do you need a graphics card for video editing? Yeah, graphics cards help with certain aspects of video editing. 3D tasks, rendering graphical effects and animations, and rendering at higher resolutions. And a recent major update has enabled Premiere Pro and After Effects to use the GPU for significantly faster rendering. The CPU is the main powerhouse of an editing PC, but it has just a few very powerful cores, while graphics cards have thousands of less powerful cores. These many small cores are perfect for tackling these tasks, which can be easily broken down. It's the difference between one really strong person moving items versus hundreds of average strength people moving the same things. For tasks that can be broken down, you may as well have the hundreds of average people moving items, and that's what a graphics card is doing. NVIDIA vs AMD There are two major graphics cards brands, NVIDIA and AMD. While both are very good at what they do, NVIDIA tends to come out on top for most video editing and rendering. This is due to their CUDA technology. Compared to OpenCL, the technology used by AMD, CUDA is faster in Adobe programs. Different editing programs may result in different performance outcomes. If you want the most performance and don't mind spending a little more money, we recommend picking up a graphics card from NVIDIA. If you're a professional in need of a ton of power, the NVIDIA Quadro line of cards is probably where you'd want to look. How much VRAM do you need? Every graphics card has an amount of VRAM, which is its own onboard video memory. Most consumer graphics cards these days have between 4 and 8 gigabytes of VRAM, with professional grade cards often having much more. 4 gigabytes is the minimum you should have for video editing and rendering, but you would be better off with 8. This allows the GPU to handle more tasks. Having too little VRAM might cause the GPU to send some of its tasks back to the CPU. Do Windows and Mac OS matter? This is important to know. Mac OS only supports AMD graphics cards. So if you have a Mac desktop and are looking for an upgrade, NVIDIA is just off the table. However, Windows can support both brands just fine. Is there any reason to have more than one graphics card? Two GPUs does not necessarily equal double performance, unless you have a high-end professional CPU and chipset that can make use of them. For the majority of consumers, a single graphics card will be plenty, and a better way to spend your money. Not every program even can make use of multiple GPUs, so you would likely be wasting the hardware. If you do have two GPUs lying around, you may be able to make use of both of them, as long as they both use CUDA or both use OpenCL. Depending on the technology, you may also be limited on VRAM amount. Two 8GB cards will leave you with only 8GB of usable memory, not 16. So how do you pick a graphics card for video editing? The answer to what GPU should I buy can be a complicated one. If you're an average consumer video editor and not necessarily a professional with a high volume of tasks, you can buy pretty much any current or last generation graphics card and be happy with it when it comes to video editing. This can be an expensive component, so it's important to understand how much you should spend. Only spend as much as you're comfortable with. There are plenty of budget-oriented cards that will get the job done at under $300. But if you wanted to, you can spend over $1,000 on a high-end card that may have diminishing returns for the average consumer. For the average video editor, spending around $500, give or take a couple hundred, is probably the sweet spot. As we said before, users of Adobe software will want to go the NVIDIA route in most cases. However, AMD's Radeon 7 was specifically designed for content creation. It sports a whopping 16GB of memory, meaning it can sometimes go head-to-head -head with NVIDIA's higher-end options. Apple computers use AMD graphics cards, making the Radeon 7 the ideal choice for Mac OS editors. As with all things, different features on different cards will impact your decision. And that's all about picking a graphics card for video editing. 
Unlike for gaming, where there are often performance metrics you'd like to hit, video editing is a bit more nebulous. Like we've said, most people will be happy with just about any modern graphics card. Let us know in the comments below what you're running, and if you're planning any upgrades in the near future. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And if you're looking for professional LUTs, Lightroom desktop and mobile presets, Premiere Pro templates, and more photo and video education, visit filtergrade.com today.